Hey guys, still there. Yesterday, in case you missed it, was the stream on the Finland unish, units, or the Finnish units. They're not quite done yet. There are still some changes being made, so some of the stats that you're going to see in the screenshots that I took from the stream are not going to be the same as the ones that you're going to see in the actual game. That was already mentioned, they just didn't exactly mention what the changes are going to be. But some of these units are really, really interesting. And the way that I'm looking at Finland right now is that they have a... I'd say mostly USSR slash Red 4 background, but they went to a Blue 4 arms dealer and decided to get a whole lot of goodies from the shop. So with that, let's have a look at the units. And um, these are all Twitch screenshots, so sometimes you're going to see the Twitch uh, volume icons, you're going to see uh, reduce full screen, stuff like that. It wasn't to be helped. Anyway. Let's have a look at logistics. And once again, just screenshots. I don't have these guys in the armory just yet. There's nothing too special here. Um, note, however, the availability for the command infantry. Not so much in numbers, but in different forms of transportation. They got the ZIL, which you're looking at right here. They also got the BTRs, XA-180s, 185s, BTR-50. Couple of helicopter options, including which the Super Puma which is a French helicopter, so there's the first Blue 4 unit that you can see. And of course the XA-180 is a unit that's usually used by Scandinavian decks. Now nothing too special here. They do however get a command tank for 160 points. Um, I don't find it that stellar, I mean it's just a command tank. It does have medium optics however, so that's interesting. Now, the infantry, they have a lot of firepower in here, a lot of different options, and um, if you thought that IKEA was difficult to pronounce, then wait till you see all of these unit names. I'm going to try my best at them, but I am Dutch, not Finnish, so uh, give me a break there. Anyway, what you're looking at right now is the Ito 78, really, really cheap anti-air unit, costs you 5 points. The vehicle that you're going to be transporting it with is way more expensive, especially the one that you're looking at. But you could go for the uh, BTR-50 and pay just 50 points. I don't find these things to be too interesting. I'd say that their upgraded variant is much more useful, and that's the ITO-86M. These guys actually have accuracy, they have a bit more range, they have a bit more HE power. Their weapons are fire and forget, which is also always nice to have. Then, here we go. These, I believe, are called the Jakari, which are your standard line infantry. They have a couple of different alternatives, they have a couple of different transports available, and especially, from what I've been able to see, the XA-185KT, which, from what I've been able to tell, is an upgraded variant of the XA-180, and unfortunately I wasn't able to take a screenshot of it. It's a very, very good transport. It comes equipped with a Bushmaster cannon which is something that you usually only see on US vehicles. As for their stats, nothing too special. Um, the accuracy on the law is quite dreadful there, but that's the same with all of the laws, so it doesn't really make much of a difference there. Now we have the Kartin Jakari, which I believe are um, the, I don't know, the special guards or something like that. Um, armed with a submachine gun, and as to Eugen's own description, they are the short-range operators, trained in CQC warfare. You can see that their machine gun is indeed useful in CQC. Once again, they carry the law, it's not that stellar, but they are a 15-man shock squad, and that definitely helps. Moving on to the Nostovaki. Now, these guys are interesting in the sense that they are militia-trained fire support groups. I wouldn't exactly use them in their anti-tank role, however. They carry a 20mm anti-tank rifle, at least that's the description we got from the stream, which only does two points of armor piercing, and they have no heat rounds, which means that if they come up against anything that's not at point-blank range and has more than a few points of armor, they're just not going to be able to do any kind of damage to them whatsoever. They do, however, have a 1 HE value, and that can be very useful if you're suppressing enemy infantry. And with a range of 1225, I'd say they're really nice for a bit more standoff fights as perhaps your uh, shock infantry is holding the line. Next, we got the Panzer Jakari, which are armed with the, um, the Raikia or the Raika 
ATGM or LAW. It looks like an RPG to me. I'd say it's an RPG 7, maybe a 7 VR with their 19 points of armor piercing. 40% accuracy is not that good, so try to keep these guys up close. They're shock trained level. They have a 10 man squad as opposed to the 15 man squad that I showed you before. Again, armed with a CQC machine gun so they can go door to door and kick out enemy infantry. As for the transport options, they also come with the option to get the XA185KT. And that, I think, would be a really useful companion for these guys as uh, these can kick the door down and the KT can then provide fire support from a bit of range. Panzer Jacquerie 90 are armed with the Apilas system, which is way better at killing off enemy vehicles. Better range, way better accuracy, and a lot more armor piercing at 23 points. And of course they have a rate of fire of 20. Now that means that you can take out vehicles quickly, but keep in mind that they only carry 6 of these. But once again, they are shock level trained, so they should also be very very useful against infantry. And those WIP icons that you see every now and then means just work in progress. They haven't finished the icon for the weapon yet. Then we have, I don't even know what that is, the PST OHJ 82M. It's a AGGM infantry unit, regular trained, very good stealth, which is interesting. Most of them only have good stealth. It's a two-man squad, your basic AGGM group. Nothing too stellar there. Make sure that uh, you have a look at the accuracy. It's only 45%. But armor piercing for a concourse is pretty good at 20. You also have the improved version. That's the 94. And these guys come with a spike missile. Now, unfortunately, they are just hovering over the accuracy field. I believe that's 50 to 60 but I'd have to look that up. It's the same thing as the Spike MR that's carried by the Maglans. It's just that these guys carry the same missile but don't cost you 40 points. And they're only a two-man squad, so try to keep them safe. Then, we got the Raniniko Jakari, which are again armed with the RPG. Um, nothing too special here, at least not that I could find. However, they are elite. They have a 7.5mm round that they're firing, which is bigger than most nations use. As well as having a um, CQC and a stationary machine gun. So keep in mind that as you're assaulting a structure, so as you're running to it, they cannot use that machine gun. But the moment that they get inside the structure, they can actually use it. And what I found interesting about these guys is that the accuracy on that CQC machine gun is the same as their assault rifle or their battle rifle. So that's pretty good. Note, however, that the assault rifle, the 7.5mm weapon that they use, only has a rate of fire of 64. Now compare that to, for example, the AK-74 that we just saw, and you're looking at an accuracy or a rate of fire of 160. Same goes for uh, the RK-90 which is a 232 rounds a minute rate of fire. So I'm not sure if this is exactly what they want or if I'm just not quite understanding the weapon that they're using there, the M39. Next up, we got the uh, Raskasini Krima or something like it. Sorry, Finland, I'm just not that good at your language yet. 95mm heat rockets. Now this thing can actually do a bit of damage to enemy vehicles as opposed to your militia. They also have even more range than the militia fire support squad. 2 HE, uh, decent rate of fire of 7 rounds a minute. Means that they can take out vehicles pretty quickly but they're nowhere near the rate of fire of the Apilas at 20. So if you need vehicles to be taken out quickly use the Apilas if you need, um, I'd say, a larger amount of vehicles taken out, because the Apilas only carries six amounts or six charges, then bring in a couple of these guys. Only 15 points. Then, ah, there it is, the XA 185KT. I did capture it. The Bushmaster 2 has the gun on this vehicle, meaning that it's a pretty nice fire support vehicle. It is, however, very fragile. One armor on every end. Accuracy is really, really good, and that seems to be a trend over most of the Finnish units. Their accuracy is just remarkable. 60%, 30% stabilizer, 4 points of AP, 
meaning that you can pretty quickly slice through enemy transports, even at maximum range, which for this vehicle is 1750. So it's pretty nice at taking out enemy vehicles at range. Of course, they are, however, a red formation, so don't expect to be taking out Martyr 2s and the likes at maximum range. They just have way too much armor. Um, moving on, the BMP-2. This thing I found to be a little bit underwhelming in the sense that the BMP-1 is armed with the Grom, so it's your standard BMP. BMP-2 is armed with an autocannon, but you're paying 10 points more for it. And it does not, unlike most of its BMP-2 brethren, come equipped with an ATGM. So I don't find this to be too competitive, unless I'm missing something, but I don't really see how, um, for 20 points, these guys are really worth it. I would just take a cheaper transport. Then, onto support. The Ito 79 Basically, a unit that we already see, it's just a different designation. Nothing too special there. Take note, however, of the large amount of different units of artillery that they have, and we're going to see quite a few of those. The ITO 96, Book M1, nothing special there. Same stats, all over the board. Nothing is different. This is different, however. This is the ITO 90. I pulled up the stats for the standard Crotal right next to it to make sure that you can have a look at how good this unit actually is. The accuracy is the same at 60%, but this thing carries 8 missiles, and as opposed to the Crotal, they are radar guided, meaning that you can take this thing and get hit by a seed, so beware of that. They are, however, amphibious, they have a very good autonomy, very good off road speed. And being a wheeled vehicle, road speed is also very good at 150. Um, note the range against helicopters. That's the same as the standard Crotal. But the range against airplanes, where the normal Crotal has a range of 26, 25. This one has a range of 3.5 clicks. So it is actually quite a valuable unit against airplanes. But keep in mind that it only does 6 points of HE damage to a plane. So you're going to have to hit it at least twice if you want to knock it down or you're going to have to combine it with some of the other AA units. Talking of which, we have the IP, uh, sorry, ITPSV Marksman. Now, I compared this one to the Chieftain Marksman, because it is the same value, 60 points. Chieftain Marksman is a bit more heavily armored. It has 11 frontal armor versus 7, and with 11 frontal armor, the Chieftain can, depending on the seed missile that's fired at it, survive. The ITPSV, I'm not too sure. I don't think it's going to survive most seat missiles fired at it, so be careful with this thing. It is radar guided. But it's nice to see a marksman system on the Red Force side for once. Next, we got the Telok 91. Um, very, very powerful artillery unit. Quite a nice amount of rate of fire at 7 rounds a minute. I was quite pleasantly surprised by that, as most artillery units of the 152mm caliber are looking at a rate of fire of 5, 6 maybe, so 7 is quite good. And it is a prototype unit, so you can not get more than one card of these. But for one card you can get either 4 trained or 3 hardened in the current deck that they're using, which is a Finnish standard. So in a support deck you can have these guys at even uh, better veterancy. Then we got the Ruck 91, your basic um, large area suppression MLRS. Nothing too special about it. Uh, 11 HE damage is quite nice. I think that is going to fire all 16 of those rockets in one go. I don't know how supply intensive it will be, but if it's anything to go by from the units that we have now, these things can quickly eat supplies, so be careful. Also note, it's HE damage, not cluster. It does not do any damage to armor penetration or to any armored targets. Of course, it's... Um, aside from the HE. Then, they have the Sargai mod. Um, the guys must have some really, really good optics, because usually you don't find a 23mm gun, dual or correction single barrel, at a 40% accuracy. That is usually something that radar guided units have. So we're going to have some non-radar guided and even radar guided units who could be really jealous of the accuracy of this unit. 
Now they have a very nice availability, 13 or 9, and I'd say that these make excellent counter helo rush options. Just deploy one or two next to your base and you're making sure that any helicopter is going to get a nasty surprise as it gets close. And at a rate of fire of 472 rounds a minute, with a very nice amount of armament carried, 1000 rounds, I'd say that these make very, very price effective units, especially considering that they can also, at a pretty good range, engage the airplanes. So a 23mm gun is now more effective than, uh, for example, an IGLA at a range of 1900. So keep that in mind. Then we got the Telak 84. I compared this to the Sholef, this, this is the Israeli artillery unit. The Telak is 10 points cheaper, it has a worse dispersion. The accuracy on the direct action, so that is the um, AP round that it fires, is 45% on the Telak and 50% on the Sholef. Other than that, it's the exact same unit from what I've been able to tell. Just your standard artillery unit. It is, however, a prototype, and um, as opposed to the artillery unit that I showed you before, this one only has a range of fire of four rounds a minute, so it doesn't fire as fast as the, what was that, the Telak 91. Then, they got the Telak RH-66, which is a 160mm howitzer, and a correction, mortar, which is interesting, as um, it does with a smaller caliber, correction, larger caliber, slightly less HE damage. This is the Telak again, at 7 HE, and this is the uh, 66 at 6 HE. Rate of fire of 7, so don't expect to be putting up smoke screens with this thing in a hurry. It just doesn't have the rate of fire. Compared to the Makmat, it's also 60 points. Um, the Makmat is slightly faster at off-roading, and this vehicle as opposed to the Makmat, can go for quite far. <clears throat> Autonomy is 550, which is double that of the Makmat. So you can actually get this thing to the front line and back to get it resupplied all by itself, instead of having to drive your supplies to the Makmat. On to the tank section, where we find the Charioteer as their base uh, very, very cheap tank. It's a 20-pounder gun, um, not the most agile of platforms, I mean, 55 kph off-road speed, it's not bad for a 20-point vehicle, but other than killing off some very, very lightly armored targets or spamming these things en masse, I don't see a very useful role for them. Talking about spamming them en masse, if you wanted to, they are two cards at, let's say, hardened, which is 20 units per card, so you can spam 40 of these units if you really wanted to. And now we're moving on to the glass cannon area. This is something that was already teased in the blog post. The Finnish units have incredible accuracy, but they don't really have the armor to soak up any kind of return fire. You're looking at a T-55M Matty, which has 70% accuracy. Now, keep in mind that 70% accuracy is usually only granted to super heavy tanks, starting at a price point of 165 and above. Armor penetration or armor piercing is 17, Rate of fire of 7 is okay, but especially the accuracy will make this thing a sniper. And uh, true to a sniper unit, it does not have a lot of armor. 7 points of frontal armor means that basically any tank that's going to return fire is going to do a significant amount of damage to your precious sniper unit. What I do see these things useful as is, um, I'd say, more static defense because when they're standing still, they have a very good amount of accuracy. When they're moving, not so much. They only have a 15% stabilizer on that thing. So if you're firing that gun, be sure to sit still. And I would just park these things along open areas where you could, for example, be expecting some sort of infantry transport rush. And these things will quickly snipe them one by one and potentially also engage medium tanks to pretty good success. Then, they're super heavy, T-72 M1 mod. I compared it to the Leclerc, as it is also a 165-point tank. They both have very good accuracy, 70%. The Leclerc, however, can have a stabilizer at 70%, whereas the T-72 M1 mod does not have the 70%. It only has 40. 
Leclerc has 22 AP, this one has 23. Leclerc, however, fires way faster at 12 rounds a minute versus only 8. So if you put this thing up against, let's say, its blue 4 counterpart at the same price tag, I think that the Leclerc would win by the sheer rate of fire, although the Leclerc will take more damage, as both tanks have uh, 21 points of frontal armor, but the Leclerc is slightly worse on the armor if you're going to look at the side armor. This thing has 10, the Leclerc only has 7. And the last tank, or um, the other, well, let's call it a medium tank, T72 M1 pay, uh, PAIV, or PAVE. Again, really, really good accuracy, 70%, very good armor piercing at 23. But once again, the armor is a bit lacking. It is only 14. And yes, you are paying 110 points for it. Again, it's a sniper. It is not something that you would throw into the action and hope for the best. Keep these guys as supporting units. And I, so far, have not really seen any of these units that can actually soak up damage. They just don't seem to have any. But maybe the Stug that we're going to see in the vehicle section is meant for that, just as a meat shield. Reconnaissance Tab has quite a large amount of units. Um, we have the Alouette 2 here. And while it is um, equipped with skids or water floats, I don't expect this thing to actually be able to do water landings. But then again, it's a helicopter. Note the speed. 185 means that it puts it right up there with the MI-8, I believe, as a reconnaissance helicopter. It is really, really slow. you got to make sure that you plan ahead. Otherwise, if you expose this thing too much, it is going to get shot down really easily. Another unit is the BMP-1 TJJ. It's a uh, recon unit, medium stealth, very, correction, good optics, good speed off-road, good autonomy, good road speed, of course. Um, the overlay, unfortunately, shields it a bit, but it carries 12 Concours missiles at an accuracy of 45% with 20 points of armor piercing. I compared it to the Bradley, as I think it's the closest blue for a unit that comes close to it. Bradley is 50% more expensive at 45 points. Comes with an autocannon versus the Grom, which is a standard AP gun. The Toe has more accuracy, um, but less armor piercing at 15 versus 20 that you're seeing here. It does, however, have three frontal armor. Correction, that is the same here, but has very good optics. Again, I think that these are pretty good standoff units, but in a stand-up fight, in a straight-up one-on-one, they are not going to last for very long. And that's, once again, a bit of a trend with the Finnish units. Now, this is the unit that we're all going to be dreading, probably. Um... I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Um, it is basically an LSTR 40 unit with very good stealth and very good optics. You're paying the same price at 35 points, except that uh, the Jetomatic, which is their assault rifle, has 40% accuracy versus 60% for the LSTRs. They carry the same amount of armor penetrating weapons, which is 6 only. The um, Apalas has 23 versus the Vampire, which is 24, and most other stats are the same. These guys carry the Igla N, however, whereas the LSTR carry the Igla. It doesn't matter that much, but it is significant. It is a bit of a difference, as accuracy is a bit better. This thing has medium optics, the LSTR, versus the very good optics on these guys, and they have good stealth, whereas these guys have very good stealth. If you have a group of these guys behind your lines, then you're going to be in trouble. And what separates these guys from the LSTR is that they can both be airlifted, but these guys can actually tell you what's going on in their environment, whereas the LSTRs basically have to wait for someone to get into their medium optics range. And that means that I think that these are going to be slightly more effective. Although, in a direct infantry role, I think I would still prefer the LSTRs, because they are just that good with that accuracy on their gun. 
Then we have the quad bike. Um, we were talking about this yesterday on the TeamSpeak, and this thing has an off-road speed of 80. It's 25 points, um, very good optics, very small size, and good stealth. The thing is that I believe a quad doesn't have a speed that's any faster than 80 anyway, so for this thing to go 150 kph on road as well, um, <laughs> I don't know if a quad can do that, but maybe if you have a military boosted engine it can actually make it up to 150 kph. Although, I would probably not want to be on a quad if it's doing 150. Next up, another glass cannon, although this one surprisingly has a bit more armor than the one we find in the tank section. This is the T55 Peon PSV. Again, very, very good accuracy, very nice gun, 17 AP power, 10 frontal armor, as opposed to the 7 frontal armor that we saw before. If you have the choice between this one and the one in the tank section, I would just pick this one. It's basically the same as we have in the Dutch deck, which is the Leopard 1V, or the Leopard for Kenning. The Leopard for Kenning is slightly more expensive. Again, at 65 points, the same price tag as this one. This T55 actually has more frontal armor than the Leopard for Kenning, at 8 versus 10 on the T55. It has a better rate of fire, uh, slightly worse armor penetration, and only 65% accuracy. But once again, it's a pure sniper this T55. I would not put it up and hope for the best, because on the move it just won't hit anything. 15% stabilizer is not good enough. Other reconnaissance unit is the Sissy. Um, your shock level trained reconnaissance infantry. Very good stealth, very good optics. Sniper, RPG, and a submachine gun by the looks of it. I didn't find these things too special. They have a nice amount of um, availability options for their transports, so you can get them into the situation where you need them to go in basically any kind of transport. Now, as for vehicles, we've got the BTR-50 Vigilant. Um, I'm not sure why this is a BTR-50. It must be their designation, because I think it's an XA-150. Anyway, it's armed with a Vigilant missile, uh, terrible range, terrible accuracy, decent armor piercing, um, pretty poor platform. I don't really see a good role for this, as its range is less than virtually any tank, unless you're really looking at the worst of the worst tanks. Accuracy means that um, if that tank happens to miss you, then even if you're still alive, you're not very likely to hit the target. And if you are going to hit the target, which is in fact a tank, then you're not that likely to do a lot of damage. So I would very, very much recommend skipping over this unit. Other units that you can see here is, of course, the Sturmi, also known as the Stug. 75mm rounds, carries a nice amount of armament at 50 rounds, although with their survivability and an autonomy of 155, I believe that is the lowest that we've seen in-game so far, meaning that you're going to be carrying a fuel tank after this thing um, everywhere. Don't even consider driving these things through woods, as they are just atrocious. And I believe it is also having the... Um, well, I'm not sure if it's an honor, but it's the oldest unit in the game. It's from 1944, and I don't really see any other units that are that old, not to my knowledge. As for the gun, 6 points of AP, 2 points of HE, um, and not too bad round of rate of fire at 8. But again, as with most Finnish units, say it with me, it is not very heavily armored. Although this thing at 3 at least has a bit more armor than most of your transports. And at 40% accuracy, they are actually more accurate sitting still than some of those T-55s are on the move. I would consider blending these things in with an initial infantry push, in the sense that you have your transports. If you go with transports that are armed with machine guns, you can blend in a couple of these for 10 points, kill off some enemy transports before they kill you or your infantry. At least that's one way that I would consider using these. 
As for the other units that you can see here, the XA180, the 185, and the uh, Terra Musti, I don't have screenshots, unfortunately. So I'm not exactly sure what the stats are of those things. The helicopter tab is remarkably empty. We have the HH-10, which is, again, armed with um, a bit of an unusual weapon system for the Reg, which is the TOW-2. Very good and basically the standard TOW-2 missile that you're all familiar with on the MD-500 platform. So they get both the MD-500s and the MI-8s in their helicopter tab. What they're really missing is a gunship. And by gunship, I mean something that has guns, rocket pods, and HGMs. It just doesn't have that. This thing is the closest that comes to mind. This is the MI-8TKT. 23mm uh, rounds can it fire at a very, very good rate of fire. 2,500 rounds a minute. But I would still not exactly put it up against anything like Apaches or longbows or stuff like that, because they don't have any armor. Your hind, at least, can take a hit or two. This one can't. It only has its 8th strength to rely on. As for rocket pods, it may look impressive, but it only carries 40 of those 80mm rocket pods. So, or rockets, not it doesn't carry 40 rocket pods, if ever. Keep in mind that your hind, for example, carries 80 of those rockets, meaning that this thing is going to be empty way faster than you might expect it, but then again it's nowhere near the price tag. It's only 55 points. Then we're getting into the airplane tab, where we find the Avia 28. Now this is a vehicle that we already you know. Um, it's the B5. It just has a different bomb loadout. This thing has a 1500 kilogram bomb versus the 3000 kilogram bomb that North Korea likes to drop on you. The difference is that this one has 24 HE versus the 30 HE that you see on the B5, and the B5 is 50 points more expensive. So I'd say that the Avia 28 in that capacity is actually not that bad. I think it's quite useful. It, however, has um, a terrible turn radius, 600, same as B5. It has a lot of strength at 15 meaning it can soak up quite a few missiles or um, let's say 35 millimeter rounds and still keep airborne. It even comes with a rear gunner, but just make sure you line this thing up, well, basically half the map in advance or it's not going to be able to turn in time to get the bombs on target. Next, we got the Hawk 51, um, a nice and pretty cheap, I'd say throwaway bomber. Because at 900 kph and only 10% ECM, they're pretty disposable. They do drop two bombs on target. They carry two fire-and-forget short-range air-to-air missiles. Um, with 3 HE, however, you're lucky if they both hit and you can kill a helicopter. Anything else, they're not useful to. So just get this thing for the bomb loadout, because the other loadouts I don't really see as viable options. The J-35S is one of the Draken variants, and they have quite a few of these. This one is their air-to-air -air operator. It carries a 7,000 range uh, anti-airplane weapon, but is semi-active, which means it's radar-guided. And the accuracy for that missile is pretty bad at 35%. Most of these have better accuracy. ECM, none. Basically any missile that's going to be fired at this plane doesn't have to worry about the ECM to throw it off course, as most missiles fired at this thing will probably hit. It does carry the AIM-9 GP-3. I'd say that's one of the few redeeming qualities of this plane, as it makes for a an okay anti-helicopter unit. But... I just would not really want to have these in my deck. The J-35F is a very heavy napalm bomber. From what I've been able to tell, it carries the heaviest napalm bombs that we've seen so far at 500 kilograms. Accuracy, of course, is not important here. It says 10%, but you're basically dropping those things and hoping for the best. It carries six of them, but again, the platform, the Draken, does not have any kind of ECM. They are just very easy to shoot down. 
Also, note their time over target of 75 seconds. You're not going to be able to keep these things circling for very long. J35FS. Um, it's basically the same loadout as the J35F Draken that we already have, except that where this one has the RB28 Falcon, so the uh, Fire and Forget short range air to air, with, I look at this, 25% accuracy. Yeah, um, not really. That's where the Draken carries the 75mm Yachtra kit. It's both of these, both the Draken and uh, the FS, I would just not recommend. This one is interesting. The MiG-29 913. I don't really see the appeal of this plane. It carries two missiles, fire and forgets, almost 8 kilometer range. Pretty good accuracy, but it only carries two. If one of those missiles missed the target, then you're not going to shoot down your uh, intended kill. So you're going to need to hit both, and that's not very likely. Compare that to, for example, the MiG-29 912B, which is basically the same price. It carries two fire and forgets at 4,200, and two, uh, correction, four fire and forgets at 4.5 kilometer range, which is way better than what you're seeing here. Or the F-16A Block 15, um, it has 10% less ECM, but comes with semi-active missiles and short-range fire and forgets at the same price tag. So, I don't really see the appeal of the MiG-29. Not really. I mean, it, these things are always, as far as I'm concerned, one of the sexiest aircraft in the game, but as far as actual usefulness, not so much. But that's where you got the F-18C. This is something that's going to make most Americans jealous. And already during the stream and stream chat, there was quite a bit of uh, <laughs> a disturbance among the US following that the Finnish got this unit. They have two short-range AIM-9Ms and a couple, I believe, four, if not six, long-range AIM-21As or AIM-120A MRAMs. Of course, both of these have very good accuracy. Both of them have 5 HE. Compare that to the Eagle, you can see the same price tag, same amount of ECM, same amount of air detection, same speed, but the Eagle can stay on target a bit longer. And the other Hornet that we have in-game available as an air superiority fighter is the CF-118 or 18A Hornet. Lower price tag, a lower ECM, carries more short-range missiles and two semi-active radar missiles, meaning you're going to have to keep in the area in order to hit the target. And that's as far as I have the screenshots. Now, general opinion on Finland, I'd say they are very good in the infantry and reconnaissance department, but they're going to need a lot of uh, fire support and just line units, especially tanks, to take a beating. If you combine these guys with, I'd say, Russia or uh, Poland to some extent, because that's the coalition that they're going to be in with, Poland. Poland at least has some decent tanks. And combined with Finland, I'd say that they actually have a pretty good chance at doing a significant amount of damage. As for Finland alone, I would be very careful, because Anything that's moving is not going to be accurate. And whereas you're sitting still, you're going to be very accurate. But anything that returns fire at you is likely to do a lot of damage and or kill you outright. To make matters worse, the ATGMs that these guys get are pretty bad. They don't get any really good ATGMs on the helicopters aside from the TOW-2. And they don't get any tow missiles or any AGGMs that we've seen so far on their planes. Meaning that dealing with enemy tanks is going to be left to your tanks and your infantry. I already mentioned the tanks. The tanks in a one-on-one -on -one fight with another tank probably won't win. Because that accuracy is nice. But the moment you take a hit, you're either going to take a lot of damage and or get panicked. And the infantry has to get close. And that's not always something that you can guarantee. So it's going to be interesting how Finland exactly plays out. Now keep in mind some of these stats may still change. We're still not in the final version of this deck. But the fact that they're showing it off means that the release is probably not too far off. 
And I think it's going to be sometime next month. Maybe this month if we're lucky, but not too likely. Anyway, that's my view on the Finnish units. Let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are and what exactly you see as the strength and the weakness of this deck. Because that's really something that I'm interested in. What maps do you see the Finnish operating very well on and what would you absolutely not expose them to? For me, for example, Hop and Glory comes to mind. That large open desert map, it's a 2v2. I would not want to have Finland there because the tanks are barely going to have any cover and the only real pushes that you can do are across open terrain so that's one of the maps that comes to mind where I really wouldn't want to have Finland but let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments and with that thank you for watching I hope you found the video useful and I'll see you soon for more videos